but let's move on to the HTML part. So I don't want to give you a long introduction. Uh, I think uh, if you watch the let watch the labs from previous year, Lucas has longer uh, introduction. Uh, I'll try to make it shorter. Uh, I was told to accommodate the whole thing within one hour, but I think I'll take a little bit longer today uh, since we have already two hours. So we are going to use WebGL. I already mentioned WebGL is the version of OpenGL that you're going to use on websites right? or web pages. So it's graphics, but you are running graphics on the web pages. But uh, since this is run on the web page, we have to use a lot of standard that is defined by the World Wide Web, right? So we are, every day we are using World Wide Web, right? So websites, that's something uh, now our part of like, we, every time we need information, we search for Google, uh, search in the Google, every time we need to check our email and other stuff. So this is like some introduction to the WWW World, World Wide Web, which was introduced by uh, Tim Berners-Lee. So he wrote this proposal in 1989 for a system called the World Wide Web. So he uh, proposed this specification uh, URL Uniform Resource Locator. So URL is the address that you use uh, to go to a page. Then Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP, that is the protocol that uh, gives us these resources that we can see over the web. Um, and also this very lightweight markup language, HTML. Uh, so HTML used to be, the motivation for creating HTML is this is very small. Uh, usually the size of the files are very, very small. So at the beginning, the internet speed was very, very low, right? People used to use their phone lines, the land phone lines for internet. So it makes sense to have something very lightweight. That's why this HTML, this markup language was created. Now we have many additional things like JavaScript and sometimes other stuff that makes uh, the web page heavier to load, but still the basic HTML is pretty straightforward. Uh, he also implemented the first browser. Uh, browser can be text-based or graphical. Now there is no more text, no use for text-based browsers. Most of them are graphical. And web server and web page. So what is the browser? So the browser is what is used for browsing the web page, right? So uh, the Google Chrome or the Safari or the Microsoft Edge, uh, Mozilla Firefox, those are the browsers, right? the software that you use for browsing the web page. And the web server is a server that is actually a computer that, that is uh, somewhere else. Uh, and that computer is have the copy of the web page that you're going to use. So everyone is going to access the web page for the resources in that server. And the server is providing the service them right so a server is a computer a very powerful computer that can handle a lot of uh, requests from the internet to provide them the information and the web page is the is the resource right web page is the content that you see web page can be a simple html file or it can have a lot more things other than html so typically the the base for all the web pages are HTML, then additional things are added like images, scripts, and then ima image, uh, there can be videos, there can be more complex programming. Like the YouTube, it has in its, own, its own video player, right? So those are not as simple as uh, some HTML scripts. So this is a very basic structure of the HTML. So HTML is a standard markup language for creating web pages. Uh, you, if you want to start creating a web page from the scratch, you really you start with the HTML, right? Uh, if you are using a graphical user interface based web page creator, it's also using HTML on the back end. So web pages are defined inside this tag. Since this is a markup language, that they have a lot of tags. So HTML is the tag that sort of define the body of the whole thing. 
or web page you're going to create. And inside that, there, there is this head that has the metadata of the page, so, such as the title and style and other things. And the body, body has the contents of the page, such as uh, images and text. So this is a typo. I think I should fix that. Right, so let's, let, let me try to create a simple web page uh, based on this, uh, what we have here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create some page called uh, example. So this is a text file. I am going to rename that as HTML. So it's asking me if I really want to do that or not. If I click on this one, this is a blank page, right? I don't have anything here. So now I'm going to add more stuff here. So I'm going to open that page using Atom. So Atom is uh, the, you'll see, I, I'm going to use a lot of Atom because this is uh, very convenient. We have this real screen. Eventually we'll use uh, a pair of pages, right? We'll have HTML page and also the JavaScript page and they'll work side by side. So this is nice about this one that you can open both pages side by side and edit both of them. But for now I have only one. So I'm going to just write down the HTML code here. So I need to use two things, right? So the HTML tag for defining the page, then I'm going to define the head and the, the body. So HTML, and finish the HTML here. And then I can have, as you can see, I need this head and then, then the body. So let's create the head. So I have Kite installed in my machine, so it's going to give me a lot of suggestions. So body, I'm not defining anything in the body for now. And then the end of the body. So now we can create some of the things we saw here. For example, we can have a title. So let's, uh, let's call the title. The title should be inside the head. So inside here. And the title can be something like, um, let's call CAC 160. Um, and then we are going to finish this title. Tag. And then we can have something in the body, right? So let's say, hello, everyone. And then we can say, so you can see the auto completion is doing some of the things which I don't want, but still. So let's go with this one first. So if I refresh the page now, I have this line and then the title, right? So I may want to have them in different lines. So what I can do, I can create a paragraph. Or I could just use a line break. Uh, let, let's go with the paragraph. Okay. Then I have two lines, right? So this can be a very simple um, HTML web page. 
So you can add additional contents here, like right? uh, the language, uh, then the directory is generative. If you have multiple resources, then, then you can have an image directory and then a JavaScript directory and other stuff. Uh, you can some add some metadata like the character set we are going to, we can use UTF-8. Uh, there are various standards for the characters. Right? So what you want to support, you can define here. Then let's go ahead and add some image, right? So we can use this image tag to add something like this. So I'm going to, let's download some image, maybe let's search for UCSC. Let's just search for UCSC and see what kind of image it gives us. So a lot of, uh, so I want to go with the logo maybe. Uh, I can select something randomly. Um, let's go with this one maybe. This one looks nice. So I can save this. Uh, so I'm working on the desktop here. This is week one. And then I want to save it here. Like, or I can create a new directory called image. And I can save it here as well. So go back, then I have this directory. Inside that, let's name this slug. So I want to add this here. And then, as you can see, I can use this image tag. So I'm going to use image. Then I need the ID and a source. So I can just go with the source first. And then where is, what is my source? So I, my source is in the image and the name is slug.jpg. So what I'm going to do is put them the path. So image. And then I need to define the name, so which is slug.jpg. So okay. and I'm not going to use the ID for now. I'll just use the source and see if that works. So let's see. So as you can see, the image is loaded here, right? So eventually we'll need ID when we're going to use this resource with our JavaScript. So I'm, I'll add the ID maybe right now. So let's use this ID and let's call this image one. This is just a name you're going to refer this image later. So you'll not see any visible output uh, change here. But eventually you'll see something. Uh, you'll see why we're going to use the ID. So this is a very simple HTML page. Um, then on top of that, we're going to add more stuff. So any questions so far? Okay, so there is a question about lab zero. No, so for the lab zero, we are actually going to get a vector library. Right? So for the vector library, we are going to use this canvas, which is uh, something you use for creating 2D context. And for doing all these things, the first sort of the first thing is the HTML. So in the beginning, I sh showed you the outline. So we need the HTML, you can use CSS, for creating some more design. And then we are going to use a lot of JavaScript. JavaScript is going to be our programming language. I would not say JavaScript a programming language because that is more like a scripting language. So for running JavaScript, we need to learn how to do HTML, how to write HTML code. That's where we are now. So did I answer your question? All right. Okay, 
So if there is any, there is no more question about HTML, I'm going to move to CSS. So, so CSS is short for cascading style shapes. So this is a language that is sort of you use inside HTML for defining some styles, some designs aspects of the page. For example, here you can see the page is pretty much same as what we did before. If we refer to this page. We just added something extra in between this uh, title and end of the head, right? So still we are doing that inside the head, but we are defining some lines like the body. Then we're telling text align center, which is sort of self-explanatory. We're going to align everything in the center. Then we are defining this font size, which is 24. Then the P is for paragraph, right? So the paragraph font size is going to be larger now. And also we are defining this, this image tag. So if we have this image, the width of the image is going to be defined by this number. So if you make it larger, the, all the images will be larger. Even the original size of the image was smaller. So let's try to do that, add that in our code and see how it affect our code. So this is everything we have and we need to do that style after the title, right? So I don't have a metadata right now, so that is fine. So the style tag, so style, then ending the tag. Inside that, we're going to define everything. So let's start with defining the body. And that is going to be centered. So let's see. So body, text, align, center. So body. And you can see it gives you a bunch of options. So if I type in text align, you can see it's already here. Uh, Center. Let me add some space just for better readability. And then I okay. Let's let's save this one and see how it is going to affect the whole thing. So now everything is in the center, right? Then I want to change the type of the paragraph, the text. So I'm going to change E which is going to be, you have a bunch of attributes that you can use. I'm going to use text size uh, or font size, not text size. You can set font style, font family, weight, variant, a lot of stuff. Okay. Let's just go with the larger font for now. Uh, if I go with 48, uh, maybe with pixel, um, no, let's jump, just go with 48 and see how it affects the whole thing. 48 is too large, uh, but you can always try. So it doesn't look too bad to me, but I'd make it smaller, maybe 36. And then change the image. So now the image is sort of a bit larger. I want to make it smaller, maybe. So I can add something like the width of the image. You can always also define height and everything else. So white, this is 100. I don't want that small, maybe uh, 300 px pixel. So now this is much smaller, right? So we can, define things like this uh, on our web page using the style sheet. So it is better to have a different page with the CSS uh, instead of you know cramming everything in the same uh, page like this one, right? So we have, now we have a few lines of code. Eventually we'll have JavaScript and everything else. 
there will be a lot of stuff. So it is better to move that style to a different file to make uh, your code better for management. That, that would be cleaner way of write, writing your code. And you can reuse the CSS, that's the nice thing. So you can use the same CSS instead of typing in or copying the text, you have a different file, you load the file and then you just uh, use that for all of your HTML pages. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. And let me first explain that. So you can use this link tag to add the CSS as style sheet. And then you can have a different file. You can name it styled or CSS or whatever you want. So that's what I'm going to do now. So here we go. I have this image here. I'm going to create a new file. Name it style.css. Then I can use that with uh, Atom as well. So now I can use the advantage of the side by side, right? I can move it here or I can just split right uh, and close this one. So I have this HTML. I don't have anything on the CSS. I just want to move this to the CSS part. And then if I remove the style, we'll be back to the original code, right? There will be no special style. So now I need to import or link the style uh, as a style sheet and then import the file. So the same place after the title, you can use this link right. and then this is style sheet you can see a lot of uh, things are already recommended here so this uh, it is not necessary to use this quotation but i have to use that anyway then i need to do this href which is uh, the name of the file right which is css uh, style or css so style.css, uh, I need to end the tag. Uh, there we go. Let me add some extra space to make it cleaner. Now we have two different files, but still I'm running the example.html. And we're back to the original style, right? The style we created. So this is how you can use CSS um, with HTML. So we are not going to use a lot of C CSS. Uh, it's up to you to improve your page or create new designs, but that's not going to be required at all. You can completely skip the whole CSS thing. I'm going to show you some resources that you can use for learning HTML. So there are many tutorials. Uh, I think the W3 school is the best one. So that if you go to W3 schools, they have this CSS tutorial, uh, but maybe start with this one. So HTML tutorial, it shows you all the details, like how to write, create pages, examples, then trying that yourself. Uh, usually, for example, for the assignment zero, we are going to need some components for HTML and the resources are given here, right? So you can go to the resources section. A lot of the resources are in the book. I believe the book is already mentioned in the class. Uh, this is the web gel Matsudalia. I'll show you again uh, after some of the JavaScript part. Then there is a link to JavaScript, the tutorial, but for HTML, we are going to use this input and this select two elements. I believe this uh, tutorial also has this elements explained here. And then also you can check the CSS tutorial. 
uh, how to design or improve the look of your page, but that's not necessary for the WebGL, right? So there is a question on the chat. Uh, yeah, the video will be available, uh, not the slides. Uh, you can always take a look at the video and uh, I'll probably upload some code on the files, but obviously you can, you can always follow the instructions. Uh, the instructions, they're more clear for the assignment zero. Um, but for the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript part, probably I'll upload the code in the file section of the canvas. Okay. So yeah, follow these tutorials and they are going to be really helpful. Now let's move to web server, right? So let me introduce that here. So before we move to the web server, is there any question? 